Hello, my name is Aaron Cohen Gadol. I'm a neurosurgeon, and I want to talk to you today about a procedure called transphenoidal surgery or endoscopic endonasal surgery. This is a very specific procedure that involves accessing the base of the skull through the sphenoid bone, in other words, through the nose to be able to remove a brain tumor or manage other abnormalities within the uh, skull base. It is commonly done for removal of tumors of near the pituitary gland and again around the region of the skull base. This is a very complex area and uh, specific and significant expertise is required. Transphenoidal surgery can be performed traditionally via microscope or most, more recently via an endoscope. The endoscope is a small camera that the ENT surgeon along with the neurosurgeon use through the nose to expand visualization and be able to see the area of the surgery. This is minimally invasive and is quite effective uh, recently in terms of performing very complex operations. A terminology that is very important is the pituitary gland. It's a bean-sized uh, gland that is uh, located along the base of the skull and it's very important for production of critical hormones that are involved in growth, management of many other vital functions in the body. Transphenolo surgery is performed by a neurosurgeon that works with an ENT surgeon or a head and neck surgeon or a rhinologist to be able to use this small camera, long small camera through the nose colonoscope to be able to remove the tumor. Typically your physician or surgeon orders a thorough um, badge of tests including pituitary hormone evaluation to make sure what are the changes with your regular, regular pituitary gland and how is the gland is affected. Also the NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as Advil or Aleve are stopped as well as blood thinners are stopped a few days before surgery in order to avoid excessive bleeding during surgery. Number two, several days before the surgery, a physical exam and other tests may be performed to make sure the body can safely undergo the surgery. The night before the surgery, your physician will ask you to fast. You may take your medications with sips of water. That's to avoid any um, uh, vomiting during after surgery to become uh, life-threatening. And also, you may be asked to take a shower with a specific antiseptic. Uh, solution to minimize the risk of infection. So what's a step one in surgery for transphenolar procedure? Patient uh, is prepared in the form of given general anesthesia and a three, three pin skull clamp may be used to immobilize the head of the patient and image guidance is used for the surgery. In other words, a computer uh, co-registers the MRI that was performed before surgery to your head so the surgeon can use your MRI to localize the um, uh, position during uh, dissection. Step two involves nasal passage dissection and this is performed by the rhinologist where the gentle dissection of mucosa through the nose is conducted uh, using local anesthesia even though you're under general anesthesia and the bony structures in the midline are slightly removed and dissection and instruments uh, continue to remove some bone at the level of skull base and sphenoid bone for the surgeon to be able to reach the central location for the surgery. Step three involves opening, opening of the skull and tumor removal and a piece of bone encasing the pituitary gland, it's called cella tersica, is removed. The thin covering of the brain or the dura uh, is also incised to reach the tumor and then we use various number of dissectors under careful visualization of endoscope to be able to remove the tumor. Step four involves a piece of fat that's taken from your abdomen to fill in the defect and close the area where uh, we did the surgery and uh, other material may be used to close the area of the defect including biologic glue. Nostrils may be packed to control bleeding and that's really the sense of stuffiness that you see for almost a week or two after surgery is from the packing and all the uh, blood and the crusting that happens then. Immediately after surgery, you are taken to the ICU or regular hospital floor where you're observed for a day or two and then your nose, as I said, feels pretty stuffy 
and uh, may accumulate a fair amount of mucus and crust and maybe some small amount of bloody drainage is absolutely normal. Several days after surgery, when you're on the regular floor, the endocrinologist may check your hormone levels in preparation for you to go home. And when you go home, follow instructions provided by your surgeon. You may experience a loss of smell for several weeks. And obviously, your follow-up appointments are critical, especially a week or two after surgery, to remove the packaging and uh, other materials in your nose at the time of the surgery. What are your activity levels after surgery? These are very important. Avoid strenuous activity, including heavy lifting. Avoid um, straining during bowel movements. Avoid high risk activities such as driving. Try to walk five to, walk to five to 10 minutes every few hours and increase that gradually. Limit coughing or do so with your mouth open. Do not blow your nose, use straws or bend over at the level of your hip more than necessary. Do not uh, smoke or use nicotine product. Drink water and foods high in fiber to minimize the risk of uh, constipation. Uh, what happens after transphenol surgery? Um, usually uh, the incision care involves showering as early as the day after surgery. Avoid submerging the incision in the nose or on your abdomen under the water as much as uh, possible. Uh, finally, try to take acetaminophen or Tylenol for managing your headaches, minimize the use of narcotics, and do not take Aleve or Advil or Coumadin or other breath thinners for at least a week after surgery. When should you call your surgeon or doctor if you have fever or chills, confusion, clear fluid dripping through the nose or ears? or a metallic taste in the back of your throat, excessive third or urination, increased drowsiness, confusion, nausea, vomiting, or headache that is um, and not uh, uh, what you felt like right after surgery, any new or worsening vision problems, nosebleeds that do not stop, and obviously any other major neurological symptoms such as seizures. So other major complications that could occur from the surgery that are typically obvious right after surgery include hormone deficiencies, frequent urinations, visual loss, brain fluid leak, meningitis, nasal deformities, or very rarely stroke. In general, the outcomes are excellent for small tumors that don't invade, invade the surrounding structures. Surgical outcomes are excellent. 70% of pituitary tumors that are producing hormones can be cured via the transphenoidal surgery and there's almost more than 90% improvement in the visual problems that require surgery through the nose. So transphenoidal surgery when done in correct circumstances can be quite effective and I recommend not to necessarily push the idea of surgery through the nose if it's not the best thing to do just because you want to avoid a bigger operation. You want to definitely have the right operation for the right problem. And again, this is an area that I have a significant experience with. I've performed over 1,500 transphenoidal operations, and I'll be more than happy to provide you with any consultation as necessary. Again, thank you for being with us.